Welcome to this quick tutorial about how to use the interpolate function. I'm going to show you how to use it in Remotion, but it also works pretty similarly in Reanimated, so you can just learn it once and use it in both places. So let's say we want to create a fade in animation. For that, what we need to do is we need to change the opacity over time. For the sake of this example, let's say that the duration of our animation is 50 frames, okay? And we say that at the start of the animation, at frame zero, the opacity is zero. And at the end of the animation, at frame 50, the opacity is one. So we know the start and the end point of our animation. But we also need to know all the states in between. So if Remotion tells us, for example, that the current frame is 25, which is the halfway point of our animation, we need to be able to calculate the opacity for that frame, which is 0 0.5. And to calculate all these states in between, that's what's called interpolation. To calculate a state in between, we need to pass three arguments to the interpolate function. The first one is the value that drives the animation. In this case, we pass in the current time represented by the frame variable because we want to animate things over time. The second argument allows us to pass in the lower and the upper bound of our input range. In this example, we are going to pass in 0 and 50 because in terms of time, that's the start and the end marker of our animation. The third parameter is the output range and we pass in what we want the input range to be mapped to. In this case, we want the animation to go from 0 to 1, so we pass in 0 and 1 as a tuple. What we get back as the return value is the opacity and we can apply that opacity using the style prop. Let's take it a step further. Let's say we already have a value that goes from zero to one, generated by Remotion's spring function. And we also already have an element that is placed at the center of our composition. And that now we want to animate the translation on the x-axis from minus 200 to 200. We pass in as the first argument to our interpolate function the spring value that we already have. And we know that it goes from 0 to 1, so this is what we pass in as the second parameter. As the third parameter, we pass in minus 200 and 200 because this is where um, the animation should start and end in terms of position. As the output value, we get the x translation which we can also apply using the style property. Let's take a look at the fourth option. You might face a problem. Let's say you are animating the scale from zero to one over a time of 50 frames. For example, from zero to 50. But now what if that time has passed and you are already at frame 100? Well, the frame is outside the input range that you have passed to the interpolate function. And what's going to happen is that the results that you are getting is also going to be outside the output range. So even if you only wanted to animate from zero to one at frame 100, you're going to get the result two, the scale of two, because it's twice as much as the upper bound of the input range. How you can solve this problem if it occurs to you is you can pass in a fourth argument to the interpolate function, which is an object, and you can say extrapolate right clamp. This will make sure that the value that you are going to get as an output is only going to be at most the maximum value of the output range that you have specified. There's also extrapolate left, so you can clamp the output range on both sides. You can only use either extrapolate left clamp or extrapolate right clamp to make um, one side open-ended and the other side clamped. And by default, 
both sides are open-ended. Using interpolate will lead to animations that are linear and therefore they don't always look so natural. So this is why there's another option that you can pass into the fourth argument of the interpolate function called easing, which allows you to override the animation curve. There are a lot of interesting presets already included in Remotion, so make sure to play around with those. Um, but even better, use the Spring API to create the most smooth and beautiful animation curves out there. Um, but this is a topic for another video. This video is now done. I hope um, it was helpful. If something is unclear, join our Discord and uh, I hope we will be able to help you. And otherwise, now you know everything to create amazing motion graphics to animate all properties, opacity, scale, um, these are the most basics, so go out and create some beautiful motion graphics.